All right, so in this problem, I have five to the power of x is equal to zero. So I obviously want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, well, I'm going to first start by, let's, uh, let's start by trying out values of x. So if I have five to the power of one, for example, this is equal to five, right? If I have five to the power of, let's do one, let's do one less than one, zero. Well, any number to the power of zero is one. If I have five to the power of negative one, this is going to be one fifth. If I have five to the power of negative two, this is going to be one over 25. Let's say I have five to the power of negative 10. This is going to be one over five to the power of 10. So you see, as the exponent keeps on decreasing and decreasing and decreasing, well, it's eventually, well, it's approaching infinity, right? But will it ever reach infinity? Well, let's see if we can even find a value of x that makes this equal to zero. So the first step I'm going to do is take the log on both sides. So I have log 5 to the power of x is equal to log of zero. Now if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. So in this case I have log 5 to the power of x. And I can move x here to the front. So now I have x times log 5 is equal to log 0. Now, if I divide both sides by log 5, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 0 over log 5. Now log 5, this is equal to 0 0.6990, and log 0 this is actually undefined, meaning I have x is equal to undefined over 0 0.6990. Well, if something's undefined and you divide it by a number, it's still going to be undefined. So, meaning the value of x is undefined. All right, so in this problem, I have m to the power of 3 plus m is equal to 350. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 350 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I have m to the power of 3 plus m minus 350 is equal to 0. Now, m to the power of 3 plus m minus 350, well, I can rewrite 350 here as negative 343 minus 7. So now I have m to the power of 3 minus 347 plus m minus 7 is equal to 0. Well, m to the power of 3 minus 347, this is the same thing as m to the power of 3 minus 7 to the power of 3. And I have this plus m minus 7. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is the same thing as a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is m and b is 7. So I have m minus 7 times m squared plus 7m plus 7 squared. I have this plus m minus 7 is equal to 0. Now, 7 squared this is the same thing as 49, so I have m minus 7 times m squared plus 7m plus 49 
plus m minus 7 is equal to 0. Now if I factor out m minus 7, I have m minus 7 times m squared plus 7m plus 49 plus 1, which is equal to 50. So this is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have m minus 7 is equal to 0, and I have m squared plus 7m plus 50 is equal to 0. So m minus 7 equals 0. This is the same thing as m equals 7, so this is already one solution of m. And m squared plus 7m plus 50, you have to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is the same thing as negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared, which is 49, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 50. And if you notice, this is the same thing as the square root of 49 minus 200, which is going to be a negative number, meaning this won't work, and my only solution is m equals 7. All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 1,000 minus 2 to the power of 999. So to solve this, for my solution, first start with 2 to the power of 1,000 minus 2 to the power of 999. Now, I'm going to rewrite 1,000 here as 999 plus 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 999 plus 1 minus 2 to the power of 999. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 999 plus 1, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 999 times 2 to the power of 1. And I have this minus 2 to the power of 999. Now, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 999 times 2 to the power of 999 times 2 to the power of 1 divided by 2 to the power of 999 is simply 2 to the power of 1. Now, I have this minus 2 to the power of 999 divided by 2 to the power of 999 is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So now I have 2 minus 1 which is equal to 1. So I have 2 to the power of 999 times 1, which is simply equal to 2 to the power of 999. Now, another way of doing this So I first start with 2 to the power of 1000 minus 2 to the power of 999. Now this time, I'm going to rewrite 999 as 1000 minus 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 1,000 minus 2 to the power of 1,000 minus 1. And now that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 1,000 minus 2 to the power of 1,000 plus negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 1,000 minus 2 to the power of 1,000 times 2 to the power of negative 1. Now if I factor out 2 to the power of 1,000, I get 2 to the power of 1,000 times 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1. This is equal to 2 to the power of 1,000 times 1 minus 1 half, which is equal to 1 half. So 2 to the power of 1,000 times 1 half, which is the same thing as 2 to the power of negative 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 1,000 times 2 to the power of negative 1 which is equal to 2 to the power of 1,000 plus negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 999. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the problem 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first start by rewriting 2 to the power of 101 as 2 to the power of 100 plus 1. Now, 
The reason I did that is because now I can use this property that states that if I have something from a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 100 plus 1 is going to equal 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1. And now I have this minus 2 to the power of 100. Now from here, I can factor out 2 to the power of 100. So I get 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now, 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so I'm left with 2 to the power of 100 times 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. Now, there is actually another method of solving this problem. So going back to the problem, I have 2 to the power of 100, 1, minus 2 to the power of 100. Now, before, I rewrote 101 as 100 plus 1, but how about I rewrite 100 as 101 minus 1? So now I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 minus 1. And this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100 and 1 plus negative 1. Now, if I use that property again, that states that a to the power of m plus n is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n, I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1. And now if I factor out 2 to the power of 101, I get 2 to the power of 101 times 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times one half, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. So that's the second method of solving this problem.